Welcome to the Find the Way podcast. In this show, we will try to explore what is happening in emerging markets and how entrepreneurs, investors, and communities are simply finding the way to make phenomenal things happen, regardless how volatile the environment may sometimes seem. Cool. Thanks for participating today for both of you. And I, I think that there is a lot of people who really want to get a glimpse into your brains. And, and, and today's theme is going to be something that a lot of people in our audience have been asking about. Um, so if we start with the first theme in a way that you've been building phenomenal brands, phenomenal games, and outside of that, it was a lot of many things. But if today we're going to focus more on, on the gaming side of the story. Um, where did that everything start in a way is that did you go global from day one or did you have to start from a smaller place? Any, any, any thoughts on that? Well, I can start with that. Um, yeah. So we were in the, a gaming company from the start uh, and we made a, a product that was mainly used in the U.S. Uh, and then when we started our first game, our first idea was to try to attack the non-English speaking world. So it's a mixed, uh, mixed response. So it's yeah. our approach was let's go for the rest of the world, right? So it's a global, but not going, uh, straight to the, to the main, uh, main markets. But then when we went made sugar crack, which was our first, our fourth game, we thought about how we could go more global and attack those, uh, rich markets. And, and so I would say, trying to get the best fit for you. Um, between opportunity and capacity to get the, to the to those markets. And Peter, in your case, when you were um, scaling a gaming company and hitting the marketing and, and expansion mm -hmm. for for uh, Rovio and Team Angry Birds, in a way, what what was going on over there? Did you try yeah, to go well, global uh, from day one, or? Yeah. yeah, but I mean, like, there's uh, only one market and it's global. Uh, I mean, if you look at uh, kind of like it that way, so, uh, of course, being in Finland, you know, 5 million people, of course, you always have to think global from, like, to get go. Uh, but then uh, to do global, of course, you need to be very, very local. So, uh, I mean, for us, uh, you know, and that's kind of like the whole nature of, like, the App Store and all of that, that, uh, you know, uh, you don't really need to worry about it kind of like too much you're available uh, globally if you want to be uh, available globally and and back then i mean this was before uh you know like free to play and doing soft launches and like all of that so it's like full blast world uh go for it but then if you look at uh, i mean for us of course it was uh, about the game but it was uh, even more about the brand so uh after uh, then uh, uh you know kind of like going full blast to the game uh, we also uh uh, started doing a lot of other things, so you know, animation, uh, consumer products, like uh, everything to support the brand. And there, uh, of course, it's a bit different uh, when you deal with like physical products and and uh, building a brand in different markets. So actually, after uh, our office in Finland, we went to Shanghai. So we uh, decided that we need to put the extra effort into China, and uh, we did uh, like yeah, really, really well in China. Became uh, the most copied brand uh, in China, which is like a good place to be because if you're the most copied brand, it means that you're also the most loved brand. Uh, so we became the most True loved that. brand in China and uh, Angry Birds was everywhere. And uh, yeah, I mean, then uh, I would say that, uh, yeah, always uh, thinking uh, very, very uh, global. You know, there is the global market, uh, but then of course you also have to think very local and you have to do different things in China than in the U.S. than in, you know, like Buenos Aires. So, so yeah. That that is true in a way, but for both of you, okay, it's like you say that you need to really keep the mind open for a lot of the places in the world. Max, you had a very clear focus that the rest of the world, so to speak. And Peter, you mentioned the okay, starting from China and acting global from day one. Uh but did people start to play the game? So let's say your flagship games, Angry Bird and, and Trivia Crack. Was it from day one? A nice little easy roller roller coaster that everybody was just you know opening up. Yeah, the, super the easy, game and of course. Playing. Always easy, exactly. You know, that's how it goes. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, of course. That's how it goes. Yeah. So, but in in, in nah, a way that but, no, but 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 the thing is, I mean, like uh, it's it's again, uh, uh, you can never plan, and it's it's kind of like never easy. But I mean, you can of course make it look uh, very easy, and and all of that. But uh, I mean, uh, you always start with. Uh, 
uh, have become a fantastic product. I mean, in this case, fantastic game. You have to have that. Uh, I mean, there's no other way. Uh, no matter, uh, you know, what your marketing is, if your product is not fantastic, then you're not going to win. Uh, but then uh, also uh, that said, if your uh, marketing is not fantastic, uh, it it doesn't really matter if you have a fantastic product. So it's, it's kind of like you have to get uh, not just like one or two things right. You have to get everything right if you want to create a hit game. Uh, so it, it's it's combination of many many things and and uh, yeah you can you know look at it that yeah it was super easy or it was super difficult so uh, I I would always say that everything is super easy so uh, you know that's that's how I look at it but uh, people might argue that it uh, wasn't kind of like uh, super easy yeah but but it, in a way then towards for you Max um, with trivia crack uh, we were just talking with Belty last week with a mutual friend from Mokens League another gaming company now based in Barcelona and or another Argentino Argentino who's who's founder for that company he mentioned that when he basically got trivia crack to the world basically from the get go you were making more money than the whole gaming industry in Argentina combined. Is that a fact? And and it, low was bar. that fast? A girl? Low bar. A low bar. Okay. <laughs> he was, he was, uh, but yeah, we're still the only, uh, actually the only big company in Argentina, uh, company, mm -hmm. and we were doing okay with uh, our, our first games. We were, were able to sustain ourselves. We were, we were very happy with it, but with Trivia Crack, it went like 100x from one day to the other. Yeah. It actually didn't work from day one because we started releasing the game and we had the the, the real magic of, of Trivia Crack is the Question Factory, which allowed us to be number one in almost all the world. But the, the, the game knows, adapts to the culture, right? So uh, when we released it, we became number one in all Latin America uh, at the same time. And by the end of that year, we became number one in, in the US and we were, were there 66 days straight, which is a record. And we, were, we, we made 300 million downloads just in the US in one year. So it was pretty... And one of the biggest success we could have at the time, it was total microsaturation, similar to what happened uh, with Rovio. I mean, th th these, these kinds of, of games that become uh, ubiquitous for, for everyone, uh, everyone's playing it or know somebody that's playing. Yeah. And it, it's a bit, little bit of hard work, so it's difficult. A lot of hard work and then a little bit of luck. So, so it's that mixture that makes it more difficult because you have to make a lot of these good efforts and many of them are really good. And some of them do work. And Peter, you're saying that things are for you always easy in a way. Um, but both of you and for your for your time uh, for for Angry Birds and Trivia Crack, the growth has been extremely explosive. And you mentioned Peter earlier there is that hey, in the product, the game needs to be phenomenal in order to that to happen in the first place. But when we look at the the, the game is seen today there's a lot of phenomenal companies in the complete graveyard mode there's been a lot of phenomenal teams developing phenomenal games but people just don't hear about those what has changed in terms of actually getting those games was it because you were early enough in the game and the game happened to be good and there was not that much competition or well, why well what, what did you do differently i mean that's always like uh easy to say that yeah yeah you know there's less competition there's always like competition uh, and I mean, uh, it, it's again, uh, uh, my, my, my point more about like, uh, easy is, is that, uh, I mean, you have to have that kind of like, uh, attitude and, uh, ambition. And, and, uh, again, uh, if you, uh, think, uh, that, uh, you know, it's easy, then it actually is. But of course, uh, uh, some things are easy, uh, you know, uh, for, uh, or were easy for us to do. And, and very, very difficult for other people to do. So, you know, it's also a little bit about that. Uh, but I think that, uh, uh, yeah, you can always say that, you know, like, okay, uh, it was easier before. I would actually argue that uh, nowadays it's, uh, um, again, uh, you know, there are some things that are easier. I mean, there are less games coming out now than, uh, you know, like at P coming, we had like, I don't know, 700 games or something like that hitting every day. Uh, now it's a bit less, so mm. it's, it's kind of like less crowded than before. Uh, but, uh, but then, um, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, there are like changes. I mean, when we came out with Angry Birds, it was like, uh, when premium was still like a thing, people paid for downloads, uh, free to play didn't exist. You couldn't like have in-app purchases, uh, you know, stuff like that. So it's always, uh, you know, different, uh, uh, conditions. And, and I mean, if you go way back, I mean, uh, Rovio got started in 2003, you know, before the iPhone, before Android, before App Store. So totally, totally different 
kind of like market uh, dynamics. Uh, so uh, I think that it's uh, very difficult to generalize that, okay, you know, like uh, uh, back, you know, five years ago or 10 years ago that it was different. Yes, it was different, but it was different in uh, in many, many uh, ways. So it's not just that, uh, you know, uh, uh, devices were different or something like that, but I mean, like uh, App Store, free to play, and now there's like subscription uh, more and more, uh, you know, they're, they're, so it's, it's always, uh, you have to, uh, survive, you have to be successful uh, under like uh, whatever conditions are there. And uh, yes, there is always competition. Uh, I don't think that, uh, you know, if there's not competition, then uh, you you don't have a market. So so uh, that's, that's kind of like a classic thing there. So uh, yeah, I, I think that, uh, um, you know, it's just as easy or just as difficult uh, now as it was back then. So, uh, you know, you can't really say that uh, for some reason, it was easier or, or more difficult. I think it's like same, same, different tools. True. But you had something over there. Um, in my yeah. Mind. So my question is, okay, you hit this inflection point where it goes spiral. Uh, it happened to both of you guys. So I guess that uh, things start to break or, or, or everything starts to break. Uh, but what were the hardest things to fix that were not so easily fixed by money? Uh, did you have these kind of things that were so challenging? due to growth that, you know, you couldn't just throw money at them. Yeah, I would say um, one of the things that happened at first is that we made the question factory uh, expecting a, a certain amount of of questions and we start getting like a million questions per day. Or when we had 20 million daily active users in the US, you never, you're never really prepared for that. And luckily we wasn't the first game. So we had the problem smaller when we do about, we did about rouse in the past. Uh, but with the questions, we had to like starting to realize uh, about um, a lot of difficulties. Like for example, repeated questions. We got like the same question, actually the same question with just different characters, thirty thousand times in a day. So th those uh, those challenges, uh, because if you have repeated questions, then then you usually say say you, I don't want to play this game. But you say it's all the same question, but it is the same question. So finding those those small things, those, those small nuances. It's uh, it's really the the hardest part of making a great product. As as like the the discussion of why did you succeed and the others not, it's difficult because the real reasons when there are uh, of success uh, of being successful against another uh, competitor is small things like the difference between you know uh, a regular car and a really nice car are really small differences. But that was makes BMW a brand, right? So that's that's why we are. Number one tree in the world. If there was another guy making things like what, two or three percent things better, then they would be the number one in the world. And that's a difficult thing to do, like getting all things uh, together and make them work with the team you have. And what that's been specifically, the, can, can you can provide a couple examples of those small little things that you now, in retrospect, would say that were the 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 big small things that you had that provided you the, the advantage? Well, seeing that the current status of, of the market is important. For example, we chose to be native from day one. So our, our, our app was native. At the time, it was very important because native apps really uh, were much better than, than non-native apps, especially in, in social aspects. We focus a lot on, on the social, uh, the chat, the, the social experience as a whole. We mixed... Uh, correctly the, the, the Facebooks of the time, Facebook and the other social networks in order for, for the, the graphs to grow correctly. Uh, we made a, a great graphic design where things really look professional. We got a great icon. We made 2000 versions of the icon, right? So it's like we, uh, we were just discussing one bit. So everything came out to be a product that didn't feel like something made from uh, Latin America, right? Like people used to think like, Latin American products were just low quality things, copies for Latin American people. And we show that that's not the case. It's just trying to get and be the best, right? It's like being the best in a sport or being the best as a singer. I mean, there are a lot of good singers in the world that doesn't make, don't make a dime. And then you have a few that are billionaires. So what's the difference between them? Just the small things and how you got the extra mile in, in order to make your magic trick, because everything is in the end, like a magic trick, uh, a better magic trick, right? So that's, that's I think, uh, some of the thing, things we did, but also grow a team. We were 40 people, now we are 500. So uh, all those uh, transformations, uh, you can do it right, you can do, it, do them wrong, 
or, or where to grow. We made a lot of, of games that didn't work afterwards and we had to reinvent ourselves. Now we're doing VR and, and we were there in Alexa and, and Google Home. So just choosing the right uh, next steps is also important for the future of, of your game. Uh, and I think we made a pretty good, uh, a, a pretty good work. And Peter, like for, from your side, in, in a way that now, if you look back in time is like, what were you, what were the things, the small little details that were able to provide you that little edge, um, in, in your games? No, but again, I, I really think that it's, it's a combination of, uh, many things or, or like everything. Uh, so it's, it's very difficult to say that, okay, you know, because of this one thing, uh, you know, that's why it happened. But I think, uh, if you look at, uh, like Angry Birds, I mean, start with the characters. Uh, so, uh, uh, that's where kind of the whole like game, uh, got started. And, uh, then, uh, you know, like, okay, why, uh, do people love, uh, these, uh, bird characters? I mean, like nobody knows. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit like you take Sanrio in Japan. I mean, they have hundreds of characters, but the only character that people really know is Hello Kitty. And, uh, like, why is that, uh, cat character, the thing? I mean, you know, it's very difficult to. To say that yeah because you know like uh this little thing that they did i mean it's just uh again a combination of many things and it just happens to like pop and uh and uh, then like it goes everywhere uh so so uh but then if you look at uh uh you know some of the things uh you know that we take for granted now that you know like it's like click click you're in the game you're playing the game so uh there's no like uh, stupid settings or or like things that you have to go through all kinds of hoops before you can even play uh, so uh, we have to remember that uh, back in the day, it wasn't like uh, a given. A lot of games were, uh, you know, like coming uh, or done by people who were coming from kind of like PC or console background. And you uh, basically, you could, uh, you know, like fine tune the experience before you kind of like got into the game and you had all kinds of like stupid settings in the way of uh, the player and the game. Uh, then uh, I think uh, one thing that uh, we also take for granted now, if you look at like the whole uh, like UI, that uh, it was graphical. I mean, everything was about mm -hmm. icons and uh, no text. So that was kind of like a very, very important by design, uh, like uh, philosophy that eliminate all text. Uh, of course, I mean, if you look at like trivia crack, it's, uh, you know, like you couldn't do a trivia game without text probably. But uh, like in our case, uh, it was really, you know, like uh, totally uh, about, uh, you know, graphical uh, icon based, like everything, which we now take for granted. I mean, like any game, of course you do that, but that wasn't like, uh, uh, the case, like, uh, back then. So there are like many, many, like, uh, things, uh, that, uh, uh, you know, you could, could like pinpoint, but, uh, you can say that because of this one thing, uh, it took off. I think that it's always, and this is like for any, any, uh, you know, like, uh, hit anything. I mean, take a hit game, hit movie, hit song, you know, uh, why, uh, did this particular movie, this particular song or this particular game, uh, typically you can't say that it's because of this one thing. It's, it's, uh, the combination and it's kind of like creating the perfect combination and then, uh, you know, kind of like getting everything right and then running with that. So, so it's, 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 uh. People who tell you that, okay, they know how to make hit games, uh, yeah, run. They don't. I mean, nobody knows. It, it, it really is like uh, you can try to eliminate luck. I mean, that's what we try to do with Angry Birds, that we eliminate sure. the role of luck. Sure. But still, you have to be lucky. So, you know, you create like the best possible game that you can. And then, uh, you know, uh, you eliminate kind of like the need for luck, but you still need luck. So that's kind of like how it goes. Uh, absolutely. In a way, for, for <clears throat> Max, for if we look at your your journey as well, you started either Max when you were quite a quite a young guy, and then quite rapidly things moved forward. Um, did you have any idea what you were doing, or were you just trying to build a nice product, and it, then just you went with the you know flow and well, rode the wave, or did you I, have I, any? Did you have a very clear focus on now we're going to do X Y Z and this is going to happen, and they're going to boom boom boom, or was it just you were riding the wave. Well, um, since I was very young, I wanted to be an entrepreneur and I realized I wanted to be a technological entrepreneur uh, because I, I, I realized that that's where things were going. Um, and then I studied software engineering and I, want, I didn't care about the, the title at all. I wanted to learn and, and try to apply that to, to my own project. And I did a lot of projects in the school 
uh, while studying. And one of them was this, the first iPhone trading application in the world, actually. Uh, I sold it to Ameritrade and still, I mean, worked until it was bought uh, from Drop. Um, but then with that, I started my company and I wanted to be in this new wave of the mobile revolution, right? I, I remember the, the old, uh, the 2000 revolution and how it ended and I went, wanted to be in the next one. And I realized that uh, social networks and games were the, the thing with mobiles. And so I wanted to shift to that. And I came out with a Palabrados, which is basically a mixture between a social network, actually two record two, but a social network and a game, right? Where yeah. you actually use the game to meet people and to relate to other people. And then with trivia, and that's more, much, much more deep because it's, it's about content. It's about what, what brings us together and, and about what your culture. So. Uh, it it more, was more about the the need of being successful in in the technological world, and then try to find what you could do and what what you you are good at, and and so it's a mixture of both. But I would say that the most typical thing about being an entrepreneur, especially a technological entrepreneur, is being resilient, because ten uh, like nine out of ten things, even if you are successful, I consider myself a successful man. Nine out of ten things I do, they they don't work. So you have to be. Uh, really resilient and try to think about the future and the things that could happen. And that's the most difficult thing, I would say. Absolutely. And if we now bounce back from there into both of your marketing strategies when you were going global, um, your, both of the companies have been widely represented all around the globe. Um, can you give us some very unique examples in it? Let's say, let's try to dive deeper into, let's say, when you're trying to market uh, your games in, in Asia versus Latin America. Has then everything been done in the same way? Or Peter, you mentioned earlier that you need to still go local in terms of certain strategies when you try to penetrate a certain host country, let's say in, in Chile versus China. Um, any examples on how, how were you experimenting and, and getting things moving on uh, on different parts of the world simultaneously? Yeah, I, I mean, uh... Again, uh, for us, uh, it was uh, not just about the game. It was about building the brand. Uh, so uh, yeah. we did a lot of uh, different uh, like activities, different countries. But I mean, just like, uh, for example, taking China, uh, we did uh, a big update to the game uh, featuring kind of the, the Moon Festival in China. And okay, everybody knows about Chinese New Year, but then uh, because we did this... Uh, Moon Festival featuring, you know, like moon cakes, uh, so physical moon cakes. That's like a big thing, uh, part of that uh, moon and uh, rabbits and like uh, there's a lot of like this uh, uh, to the story. Uh, and uh, uh, the kind of like the point there is that uh, first time tens of millions of people outside of China here heard about the Moon Festival, and uh, we could always then say that you know, like, hey, not only are we uh, bringing Angry Birds to China, but we're bringing uh, China to the world, and of course. Uh, then you always got like standing ovation and like, uh, you know, of course, uh, anybody, if you're uh, taking their, you know, like uh, celebrations and culture, you know, to the rest of the world, of course, uh, people love that. Uh, so uh, just like a small example of how you build like uh, support and, and uh, goodwill uh, in, uh, in the like local community, in this case, China, by doing kind of global things. And uh, yeah, then, uh, I mean, we need uh, Angry Birds Space. Of course, we launched it in space on the ISS together with NASA. Uh, Don Petit, uh, the astronaut was there. He built like a real world Angry Birds game, like on the space station. That's fantastic. Over the space I love that. Yeah. But we did like a lot of these kind of like uh, things that, uh, again, uh, uh, we did uh, uh, kind of like uh, local events, but then we amplified them uh, using social media uh, kind of to the world. So, uh, so you had like, uh, we built a lot of uh, super interesting stories that then, uh, you know, people uh, could relate to. And, and uh, we did. Uh, many, many, many uh, like of these, and uh, and uh, this also I think that what uh, is important to keep in mind here that again a lot of these things uh, we did before then come out free to play and like then uh, you know of course you know you got the super sales and and uh, other companies that then uh, uh, figured out that hey you know like we can uh, buy a lot of users on Facebook for less than you know a lifetime value and then you just like throw uh, money at the problem and, and uh, that's kind of like how they built massive, massive like uh, success stories. And I think Supercell is probably like the most successful like games company out there like ever. Uh, and they were uh, riding or like surfing this like free to play wave uh, like perfectly. Uh, so again, an example of this that, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, you have two uh, 
understand uh, your environment and like what works and and uh, all of that. So so I mean, but yeah, yeah for us it was about uh, making sure that uh, our brand was in the face of people like uh, you know twenty four by seven. So that that was kind of like our approach, and we did many 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 things to to make it. So and then when you saw the brand, yeah, you play the game, you play the game. Bought the soft drink, the t shirt, the funny hat. Went to the park, you know, stuff like that, and all all uh, using the same brand. Sure. Is it a similar experience for you uh, uh, mm. with either Max um, or? Yeah, I actually have a, a couple of experiences that are worth noting. Uh, we are first an engineer, first company, and at that time more. So we didn't make any marketing at all until Trigger was a success. We did we do it now. So we we. We focused on product, and one of the things we did was like making the the, the, the question factory better and better, and it, until it worked by itself. And I remember one time we were not popular in, in Turkey at all, and we started like translating the app to several languages, and we just translated to Turkish, right? Just the app, just the, the few keys in the app, and we just left it there. And after a few months, we were number one in Turkey, and there was a lot of content there, and people were talking about this new Turkish app that was ours actually so it's it's yeah it's, it's it's everything it's about making things happen and sometimes you go from one side some, sometimes you get great marketing and a, a good product sometimes you get a great product and no marketing and so i think that uh in the end is how much or how good you you're you're fixing a problem which is basically the problem of you no know, in our case of just hanging out and, and meeting people and how you approach to new users. So for a Turkish user, it was like the first real Turkish uh, trivia game, right? Because it was about them with their questions, with their languages. They could meet from Turkey. Yeah, yeah. So it became something very, very, very strong there. I remember being, for example, in in, in an Apple event and the, the, the woman that was managing a press for Apple Canada came and asked me where I was from. And I told them, so told her I was from Trivia Crack, and she told me, Trivia Crack? That, that's a Canadian company, actually. No, no, it's an Argentinian company. And they, she thought it was Canadian because the, the, the whole product adapts to Canada. So that, it, it's, again, it's about how you fix a problem and then how you, you keep that promise with time. And there's an interesting mention of the pe like in what I experienced, especially in 2011, both in the U.S. and then 2012 in China. I heard that Angry Birds is first an American company and then it's a Chinese company. So something has gone right in a way that you've been able to localize it with, the, let's say, to the local communities in a way that they so strongly feel that it's from their country, um, which is very fascinating. About to, we were talking about the other day on on the importance of a brand. And, and in both of these cases with, with Trivia Crack and Angry Birds, you had something over there in terms of, is this becoming a challenge? You wanna you wanna open yeah, that no, up a little bit? Yeah, actually. So in in this case, both of you guys, the brand of the game became more known than the brand of the company, which is not always the case. And obviously, this came with a huge amount of success. But then you need to develop more games eventually. Do you think this was a challenge to get rid of the trivia crack and Angry why, Birds? Why why do you need to um, do more? Well, maybe not. Not not in the case of Angry Birds. <laughs> But you know, point. if you no, wanted no, no, to, but, no, but I think, more. but I think, yeah, but I, I think that you know, of of course, you can kind of look at it that way. But uh, I mean, it's it's uh, if you look at uh, uh, kind of like entertainment industry, uh, mm -hmm. you know, people yeah. go and and see movies, they go and see a particular movie, or they play a particular game. They don't care. I mean, maybe uh, Disney, I would argue, and and uh, you know, Pixar being part of Disney, then maybe that is kind of like. Uh, uh, kind of like a brand that, okay, if there's a new Pixar movie, you might go and see it because it's a Pixar movie. Uh, but, uh, you know, typically who cares about the company? I mean, it, it, it's, it's kind of like, uh, uh, pretty irrelevant in, in most cases, most people don't even know, you know, uh, the company behind Trivia Crack or the company behind Angry Birds. I mean, it's kind of like, uh, not, uh, super important. Uh, so, uh, so I, but I think that then, uh, if you look at the companies themselves, and I think this is also very true for like Rovio and, and, uh, and you like all of that, that then a lot of people were, hey, yeah, you know, but you have only done like Angry Birds that you should do like other things. I mean, it's, I, from my perspective, it's like going to Coke and saying that, you know, yeah, you, you've done this Coke thing now for quite a while. Shouldn't you do more? And of course they have done more. They have fan fans, Sprite and like whatnot and all kinds of like things. But but the thing is that it, it, it's again, um, uh, I, I don't think that the brand uh, like of the company uh, is... Uh, 
very important at all. Uh, so I, I, you know, for me, it's like irrelevant. I, I think that uh, people consume uh, Angry Birds and they love the brand. They love the characters. And uh, like in the end, uh, they couldn't care less like uh, about the company behind. So so I, I don't think that that's uh, important. But uh, yeah, of course, then, uh, you know, uh, some some people like in a company get quite carried away about these. Like, oh, but hey, you know, like you are a one uh, hit wonder that shouldn't you do like more, uh, you know. But I, my in my book, I mean, it's a little bit like uh, telling Coke that, you know, uh, they only know how to do Coke. They should yeah. do other things and, you know, like, forget about this, you know, because it's like pretty boring if they only have Coke. But, you know, it happens to be fairly popular soft drink even today. So uh, I would still like to uh, keep, uh, keep at that if, uh, if I was interested. Yeah, I agree with Peter. Um, I would say for us, the only thing was hiring. So we were very popular at Trudy Crack and we hire it was Intermax. And so we went and, and did all the, the rebranding of the, of the company just to get more hiring out there. But it's true. And the other thing is that uh, people always forget about what a success is. Not all successes are created equal. So when you create something like Trigger Crack or, or, or Angry Birds, it's so massive, so big, so important to keep which in time. And and games are not movies. It's not that you may make it and then you stop working on it. Mm -hmm. You need to keep it for, for years to come. So uh, sometimes you, yourself as, as an entrepreneur, you you can, can, you also get confused and think you have to do a lot of games and you need another, you know, another thing or whatever. And sometimes the, the actual public tells you, no, no, I want, I want this. You are good at doing this. Just do more of this and, and think about the next steps. So that's, that's some, from something we learned with time, uh, the, the power of our brand and the power of what we do and how we are the best in the world and we need to keep doing what nobody else in the world can do. So, uh, for example, just the, our database of questions allows us to, for example, right now, release a VR uh, game, a social VR game with trivia that nobody can do in the world because questions will suck, right? And we can do it and we have our own characters or whatever. And that's what people are expecting from us, not to compete with Supercell with an outcrash. So, um, yeah, it's it's something you need to learn. It's just like being a singer and some you, you think that anything you do will be like a, a, a hit and sometimes it doesn't happen or you just do another type of music and then your public tells you, no, no, I want this type of music. And again, you can experiment and you can do more things, but it's important to just keep your feet in the ground and understand the importance of what you did in the past in order to guide you for the future. Absolutely, absolutely. And then in a way, if we would take a look on, I would say is that before, Peter, you were able to go and talk to the folks from NASA, when it, at the early earlier on and at the early stage of the journey, um, did you have like a, such a big marketing budget all along, or did you have to start from the very very beginning? What what was happening there? And Max, you mentioned that with you, you just put you translated the the, the game into a local language in Turkey, and then a couple of months later, it was the number one you know downloaded app in Turkey. But Peter, you've done with Angry Birds phenomenal phenomenal um, marketing events. A couple of movies even came out. The second one before like after you left, um, but did you always have like an unlimited marketing budget, or did you need to? to no, but we had no marketing budget. And I mean, like the thing uh, actually at Rovio Marketing was a profit center, so we actually made money uh, marketing. So, uh, so uh, a very different I love approach. That. And and uh, uh, I I think that uh, you know take like Angry Birds Rio, uh, fantastic game, uh, very successful. But if you look at it. It was kind of like an ad for uh, the movie called Rio, and uh, we did very, very Tim. good uh, collaboration with Fox, and actually turned out to be the uh, most successful uh, promotion uh, and campaign that they have ever done in the whole like history of 20th Century Fox. For real? Uh, so, so uh, yeah. So, uh, so I, I think that uh, uh, you know, and and uh, people love the game, but you could also look at it as as kind of like a, uh, an ad for the movie. And I think that I don't remember the percentages, but let's say uh, I think it was like uh, uh, thirty-seven percent of all the people who uh, saw the uh, movie heard about it through our game, uh, you know, and and stuff like that. Uh, and obviously, you know, like and uh, I, I, and, and, and how, yeah. how how is the deal structured in a way that when you're when you are marketing a movie and a media and other type of entertainment industry so well, uh, what type of deals did you do in order to you know get cash flow back into into you? 
I mean, basically, we we are uh, Fox uh, and the movie people have like, uh, if not unlimited, but like uh, from a games company perspective, almost unlimited like uh, uh, budgets. And and I mean, we had a Super Bowl ad; we didn't pay for that, you know, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, they and uh, they paid too, for it. Not so, too bad. So, so, <laughs> yeah, it was like okay, but I mean, that's like without what, uh, any money. Yeah, yeah, and and it was the most talked about uh, ad at that Super Bowl, of course. So we made it like uh, properly. But but I mean, the thing is uh, that uh, uh, marketing is not about money. I mean, uh, of course, if you take the free to play model, then I, I mean, then it's like uh, you know, uh, uh, you build uh, uh, super efficient like monetization schemes that you deliver in the form of games, and then you just like do your math, you invest a dollar, and you make two. You know, it works. Uh, so that's kind of like how, uh, how it used to work on that side. But I mean, for us, like building a brand and all of that, it was all about uh, making sure that uh, we uh, use the brand and we use the brand uh, to help other people become bigger, be more successful. And uh, at the same time, they were helping us, you know, get in front of more people like, you know, Super Bowl or something like that. Uh, so, so uh, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you ask me, uh, marketing is not uh, about you know, who has the biggest budget, but it's about, uh, you know, actually making stuff that uh, has an impact that makes a difference in the, a difference in the market. So so uh, you have to be smart about it. And uh, and also if you look at uh, Rovio and Angry Birds approach at always doing things differently. So we didn't like just like uh, copy people. We, you know, made our own rules. And, and uh, then, uh, I mean, if you look at... Uh, you know, some of these things, uh, it was uh, never uh, very difficult for us to open like any door and contact anybody. So so uh, that was also part of the culture and uh, the mindset. So, uh, you know, you have to have this like crazy attitude and ambition and then you just go out there and make stuff happen. And it's not uh, about uh, money. I mean, unlimited marketing budget, you still couldn't get NASA on board if you don't have like something uh interesting for for them to work work with uh with so so yeah I've, so i think that it's it's about like uh doing things differently and and then also uh having the ambition that this is uh, like slightly bigger absolutely thank you and as a last question for both of you a little personal question i'll be focusing on on your games so one personal question as the final thought so what do you want to be remembered um when your time is is over on this earth, so when you die, what do you want to to pass by to the next generation? Well, um, I think about it uh, pretty simple. Uh, I would like to be remembered as a guy that did cool things, right? That uh, yeah. That you yeah. one of the things that I I like is doing things that never had never been done before, especially in in our country, and inspire people. So. I think uh, by doing things like being the first important gaming company in the country, being the, the most known brand uh, created in Argentina around the world, I mean, it changes the, the perspective of the people that are, that are coming, especially young people, and allows them to think bigger and, and think about how to really fix problems in the world, which I think is the key of, of the 21st century. Uh, thinking about how you can fix things that are a problem of a lot of people in the world, not just locally or just a copy of what it's yeah. in and outside. So I, w- I would like to be remembered as that, as an ins- inspiration to the next generation of, of entrepreneurs by being the man that does whole things. Nice. And then Peter. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, if I can provide a bit of inspiration to young people to kind of do more than that's like uh, good enough. So, uh, uh, no, no, kind of like big, uh, big like uh, thoughts on that. So, so I think that uh, yeah, yeah. If I if I can provide a bit of inspiration uh, and get people to do things, that's like you know already like pretty cool. Thank you so much, Max and Peter, for for your time today, and 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 that we were able to pick up your brains for for this short time. So thanks a lot for participating. Hey, thank it's you, great and uh, it's uh, great to be here, and great to uh, see you, Max. It's been a while. Yeah, same for me. Uh, uh, thank you all. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Vaudi. Uh, thanks, Peter. And let's let's keep doing things. <laughs>